Before we get into today's video, I'd like to give a shout out to one of our newest subscribers, Rob Wolf X. Thank you for subscribing, and welcome to the family. This video was a viewer request brought to you by Dhaka4444. Thank you for suggesting this topic, and if you would like to see a specific character yourself, let me know down in the comment section below. Without further ado, let us get on with today's video. Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons Character Conversion, where we take a look at characters from across media and transfer them into a playable character for Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition using their lore as the main source of inspiration. And today we are taking a look at a henchman from the James Bond. Bond franchise, known as Jaws in the movie, originally known as Sol Hor Horowitz in the original book by uh, Fleming, The Spy Who Loved Me, and given an alternate name from the novel adaptation of the movie James Bond, The Sl Spy Who Loved Me, his name is now Zbigniew Krytsiewiki. That. <laughs> So, whichever name you want to go by, Jaws, Sol Hor Horowitz, or whatever that was, which I believe was Polish, this henchman is actually a terrified character, as I talked about in my community page. If you want to check out the community page, it is where we get to talk about some of the background information that I get to find out about for these upcoming videos. Anyway, enough of promoting my own stuff. Let's go ahead and get into what makes Jaws Horowitz very interesting. And that is what his nickname implies. His jaws. His teeth. In James Bond the Spy Who Loved Me, the background for this character was that he had gotten beaten to a bloody pulp as a child, which destroyed his jaw. So he had gotten some implants. Oh, that's the origin from that one. But the implants that we're talking about here are steel teeth. Both bottom and top jaw are steel teeth that are capable of biting through just about anything. And while he mostly uses it on objects, he does use it as a weapon to crush people's... I'm going to say windpipe. Because <laughs> I don't know exactly what's going on when he actually bites down on someone's neck with those steel jaws of his. Now, he is mute in the movie and in the original book. Though he does have one speaking line at the end of the movie Moonraker, I believe it was. Uh, but anyway, starting things off with our stats, we are going to use the point by system. 15 on our strength, 12 on our dexterity, constitution will be a 14, intelligence and wisdom will both be at a 10, and charisma will be at an 11. For our race, we are going with human. We'll go with the variant human, that way we can get a free feat. Go ahead and increase your, uh, let's see, I think it was increasing our dexterity and our charisma each by one. We'll grab the skill athletics and we'll grab the feat brawny from Unearthed Arcana. This gives us double the proficiency bonus for our athletics since we have athletics proficiency, and we also count as one size larger when determining our carrying capacity. Sol Horowitz is, in fact, a very large gentleman, taller than James Bond himself in the movie. So we do get that larger than normal size. Now, we could have gone with the Goliath race, but why would we do that? We're staying lore accurate here, after all. Moving on to our 
background. We are a mercenary veteran. This will give us access to the skills athletics and persuasion, though I would recommend changing out that athletics for acrobatics. You also get proficiencies in one gaming set of your choice and land vehicles. You also get the feat Mercenary Life. Now, if you are using the rules from Dragonlance or Strixhaven, you also get a free feat with part of your background. I would recommend the tough feat or maybe even the gunner feat, but we'll stick with the tough feat for this build. Though, in some cases, your dungeon master may not allow you to get a free feat at first level, so any background that would let you do so you won't be able to use, which is why we picked Mercenary Veteran in the first place. Moving on to our class, we're going to start off with Barbarian, mostly for that large hit die and the unarmored defense feature. We get to start off with 12 plus our constitution modifier in hit points, in addition to the tough feats bonus, which I believe is an extra plus 2. You also get hit points equal to 1d12 plus your constitution modifier, Modifier per Barbarian level after the first. Your proficiencies are Light Armor, Medium Armor, Shields, Simple Weapons, Martial Weapons, Strength and Constitution Saving Throws, and Intimidation and Perception Skills. You'll get your Rage and Unarmored Defense. Moving on to our multi-class option is the Rogue. This is the standard class that you would have for any sort of henchman for some sort of uh, spy villain. Though we mostly had it because of the stealth proficiency, sneak attack, thieves count, and expertise in acrobatics and stealth. This guy likes to grab onto people, so we're going to need as much bonus to athletics and acrobatics as we possibly can. Not to mention that he has survived many a situation where normally you would probably die, like falling from great heights, getting smashed into buildings, or attacked by sharks. Moving on to level 2 rogue, we get cunning action. Level 3 rogue, we get the roguish archetype thief. Mostly for the second story work, but we also get fast hands. You also get steady aim just for being a 30 level, a level 3 rogue. But yes, that second story work definitely works for someone like a James Bond henchman. So, yeah. Thief. Moving on to level 4 rogue, go ahead and increase your wisdom by 2 points. Next is level 2 Barbarian. We get the Reckless Attack feature and Danger Sense. Now, we don't really know much about how Sol fights unless you're looking at the movies. Then you do know that he's big enough where he can technically attack recklessly and not really be harmed too much. Moving on to level 5 Rogue, we get Uncanny Dodge. Level 3, Barbarian. The main reason we went for the Barbarian in the first place is the Primal Path, Path of the Juggernaut. And you'll see why in later levels. But we do get Thunderous Blows and Stance of the Mountain. Thunderous Blows allows you to potentially knock your target prone when you make an attack against them. And Stance of the Mountain makes it to where you cannot be knocked prone yourself. Which are... With a mountain of a man as Jaws is, it makes sense. Level 4 Barbarian gets an ability score improvement. Go ahead and increase your wisdom by 2 points. Now you're wond probably wondering why we are going for a wisdom increase. And that is because of our next multi-class, Monk. This will give us a D8 hit die with extra hit points of 1D8 plus constitution modifier per Monk level. We also get Unarmored Defense, but it's not going to count since we already have the Unarmored Defense from the Barbarian. We also get a Martial Arts feature, which we don't really see Horowitz use any form of weapons besides his teeth and maybe a gun. So having Martial Arts as your ability makes perfect sense. If we weren't going for the Barbarian levels, this would probably be just a Rogue Monk build. Going on for level 6 rogue, we get expertise in intimidation and persuasion. Level 5 barbarian gets extra attack. 
level 2 monk gets access to their key feature and unarmored movement, making us a very fast character able to pursue any fleeing witnesses. Next is level 6 Barbarian. This is the reason why we wanted the Path of the Juggernaut, Demolishing Might. Any attack we make against an object automatically gains the Siege property, which means we get to deal double damage to those objects. But we have teeth like jaws. Yeah, we're going to kind of need that ability, since he does destroy a lot of objects with those jaws. Though he could probably destroy objects with his bare hands as well, though it just makes it easier to use his his jaws. <laughs> Moving on to level 3 monk. We're going to go with the monastic tradition of Way of the Kinsei. This way, any weapon that we use gets a special bonus. We're going to have to choose two weapons, one melee and one ranged. I would say a firearm and uh, probably your set of mandibles, which is probably going to end up being like dentures or kind of like Knuckle dusters. I did remember seeing some in Pathfinder, but not in Dungeons and Dragons, so you're going to have to talk with your dungeon master about that one. You also get the ability to deflect missiles, which he probably doesn't use. I don't remember much about this character other than what I've researched. Next is level 7 Barbarian. We get access to Feral Instincts. Level 7 Rogue. We get access to Evasion. With how much he survived, it makes sense that he would have access to evasion. Level 8 Barbarian, we would normally get an ability score improvement, but we're going with a feat, Tavern Brawler. This will get us a plus one to our strength and weapon proficiency of improvised weapons. And the ability, when you hit a creature with an unarmed strike or an improvised weapon on your turn, you can use a bonus action to attempt to grapple the target. Which he does that a lot in the movies when he is going after a specific target. Moving on to level 8 rogue, we're going to grab the feat fighting initiate. More specifically, the unarmed fighting, fighting style. Which allows us to not only have a d8 for our unarmed strikes while we are not wielding a weapon, but... At the start of each of your turns, you can deal 1d4 damage to one creature grappled by you. You could say you're clamping down on them with your jaws. And finally, level 4 Monk. We are grabbing Slow Fall. Thanks to the Monk's level 4 feature, along with our ability score improvement to round off our dexterity and strength each by one. I was not kidding when I said this guy survives a lot. According to the Wikipedia page, Horowitz was able to survive a parachute malfunction after landing in a barn. He just got up, straightened his tie, dust off his jacket, and walked away. Dude can take a hit. Or rather, he can survive a crash. He's a little bit unnatural. And with that being said, that is all the time I have for you today. I do hope that you enjoyed this build. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And if you want to see a specific character, remember that you can put in a request to see one character of your choice. Possibly even more. Until next time, this has been Drehan, and I'll see you on Thursday when we take a look and another character build for Pathfinder 2nd Edition.